What's going on everybody? Welcome back to JDD TV. I'm your host Josh. I'm a Dortmund fan. You guys are Dortmund fans. Your hearts are probably feeling similar to, to mine and that is like it's almost going to burst because we just witnessed the most Borussia Dortmund game you could possibly imagine where you thought they were going to blow it. You saw goals. They somehow rescued it. We got three points. And now I'm going to do my five takeaways. So if you guys are excited for that, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you guys are new around here, and let's get into the takeaways now. So after that crazy little performance there, the first takeaway, the first one I want to highlight is the new signing, Mullen. Now I want to highlight Mullen for a couple of reasons. is because he had a bit of a slow start to this in particular match. He's came off the bench a couple of times. He's had one start. He hasn't been super influential on the game. I thought this game was pretty decent by his standards for a couple different reasons. The first one, you notice that he wasn't pressing that well. He wasn't really engaged into the game. And then out of nowhere, he was just there. I remember him making a, a challenge on the left-hand side. He won the ball back. He created a yellow card of the situation. And I don't know if that just gave him confidence or what happened from that, but he picked it up. And every time I saw him grab the ball, he drifted in on the left-hand side and then took a hit. Now, I'm not saying him and Holland worked out exponentially well for the two st duo strikers, but I did notice that there was a switch in the game and he did play a little bit out wide. I'll get into that for one of my other takeaways, but that's where he came good. And to me, that looks like an option to a winger. I thought Mullen today looked like a traditional winger. That is what you like to see, a winger with confidence, going at the defenders, taking on stride from the left, cutting in, taking a shot. He did it three, four times and arguably deserved and should have scored a goal. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a good performance. I know some people are going to think, well, he didn't score, but it's not all about that. It's about building way into this team. It's about creating chances and finding your place in the system. And to me right now, his place is in a 4-2-3-1 out on the wing rather than as a duo striker up front with Holland. Second takeaway, we're going to take a look at the keeper because I need to give a shout out to Gregor Kobel. Yes, two goals went in today, none of which were anywhere near his fault, but he also came up with some massive saves, some huge saves in the game where we were talking about in the chat saying, these are the type of saves that make a difference. These are the type of saves, no disrespect to Berkey, he did not make. That one-on-one -on -one with Kramic was an unbelievable save. There was a huge opportunity in the first half as well where he stuck out a foot. He's also a sweeper keeper, which is fun. Any chances that look to come over from a long ball, he is there cleaning things up, making the perfect timed challenge to come in and get the ball away with your head, with your feet, to not touch it with your hands and get a red card, which is obviously a no-no. And I absolutely love having him between the sticks. Like I said, none of the goals were his fault, but the game could have went a different direction if he wasn't our keeper. And I'm really looking forward to him continuing it out in the keeper position because it's a breath of fresh air to have this specific style of keeper. Moving on to our third takeaway, we are going to take a look at kind of a couple different players. We're going to take a look at Mune slash Bellingham. And the reason we're going to take a look at both of them is because I needed to squeeze them both in. And I feel like they both need to be talked about. Mune, already early on in the match, we had people saying he's already flopping. Did, did Mune have the most spectacular game in the world? No. Is he a upgrade on our current options? Yes, he did an all right job. I think the fact that he's got height com comes in handy. It still shows me we need an another right back, but I thought it was an all right performance by him. I don't think by any stretch he was terrible. He gave the ball away every once in a while. The, the passes were questionable. The thing I didn't like about him is when he rushes up the pitch and he has Hoffenheim defenders on the back track, he often cuts up the play and then brings it back and is not really proactive. But other than that, I still think he had a decent performance today and it is all right having him back right now and I would like a little bit of depth to push him on that right back position. Taking an overlook at Jude, I just have to throw him in there somewhere. I'm throwing him because the goal he scored was incredible. The assist as well. He was a man of the match in my books. Another incredible performance. He went off with an injury. We're obviously hoping that he's okay, but it's just so important. And it also shows how important he's going to be to this midfield. He bossed it around. The, the movement on and off and on the ball when you saw that one stretch of play down in the far right hand side where he had 1v2 and he was taking those two all over the place with his cutbacks and was even able to get across and he just so composed and just growing game by game so both of those players i mean bellingham really good game munier all right game but you're gonna end up getting over into our fourth takeaway and our fourth takeaway is going to be depth and it has to be i mean when they uh, they drew it up and made it 2-2 two -two, i was i was angry you guys probably saw that i was frustrated i was literally pouting up until we scored the next goal a minute later but it's because we don't have depth there's no reason in a match like this where we need three points desperately that we are in a situation where 
we drop it because our CDMs is Dehood and Brandt. It's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. We need to dip in the transfer market. We need to do it now. And I mean, I, I, I want the board to take this result and be grateful somehow we squeaked out three points because we were genuinely lucky. We, we needed to be able to control that game and see it out better, and we just don't have the tools at our disposal to do that. Get in another right back. Get in a center back. If you're letting Witzel go, I mean, we may need one, two different CDMs. A winger. I don't know how they're going to pull this off. They're going to have to be strategic. They're going to have to find a loan signing for one and probably a player who can play in multiple positions. Ideally, someone who can play as a CDM and a center back. So we don't ever come in the possibility of having Brandt in a defensive position because I'm not saying he was by any stretch was at fault for the goal, but it, things could have went differently if we would have had the proper tools at our disposal to be able to see a game out, which is then I'm going to go into my fifth and my final takeaway. And it is going to be the formation along with Erling Holland. And the, the, the fifth takeaway is an interesting one because we lined up today in the 4-1-2-1-2, which like I said, lining up against a 3 a 4-3-2, a 4-2-3-1 versus a 4-1-2-1-2 is an okay match. And you saw that. We dominated possession. We had at one point over 71% possession. You saw Guerrero actively getting involved. It was a nicer way to play this game than playing it against like the Freiburg kind of system. And it did okay. We created a little bit more, but there was a huge sense of Holland was running out of options. He looked frustrated for that entire game. And luckily he scored a goal because I thought he would have exploded afterwards. But he looked angry for that entire game, and he just looked off. He looked awkward with Mullen beside him. As the game progressed on, it sort of switched into a 4-2-3-1. It definitely ended in a 4-2-3-1 with a big shout-out to Wolf, who did well coming on on that right-hand side. Mullen on the left, Holland alone up front, and he looked better. He looked like he could drift back and forth, pick up the ball, run at the defenders. He got his goal. wasn't the prettiest game from Holland, but he got the job done, got his three points. But I think going forward, this team needs to get the, the tools again to be able to play a 4-2-3-1 because this diamond formation just isn't doing it. And I think Mullen proved that, hey, I'm a winger. I can play here if I need to, and it looked nice. So those are my five takeaways from the game today, guys. I appreciate everyone who was tuned in for the watch long. It was a whole lot of fun. Very nerve-wracking watch long. We somehow were able to pull off the three points. We are 2 on one on the season. Not too bad right now. And if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to comment your guys' five takeaways. If you agree with mine, anything else I might have missed. And of course, be sure to drop a like, subscribe on your way out, and we'll see you guys next time.